Well, hello and good morning. I'm Kaz Garrard from the Association of Financial Advisors. And today we're pleased to bring you a webinar, Take Your Clients from the Poor House to the Penthouse. And this is brought to you in partnership with Padua Solutions. We would like to introduce your presenters from Padua Solutions. We have Matthew Esler and Rudy Haddad. Matthew Esler is the co-founder and co-CEO of Padua Solutions. And Matthew has over 20 years experience in the financial advice sector and has been at the forefront of financial advice technology for most of that time, having formerly been a co-founder and executive director of Midwinter. Matt is focused on simplifying complex strategy advice and enhancing advisor work workflow through next generation technology. Next up, we have Rudy Haddad, who is the Head of Technical Advice at Padua Solutions. Rudy has over 23 years experience in the financial advice profession, and he oversees the technical advice capabilities for Padua software and has key inputs into its success, successful power planning operations. So today, the Padua Solutions technical team will discuss how they have developed a database containing technical, legislative and regulatory parameters for 575 advice strategies. Yes, you heard that right, 575. In this highly technical but interactive session, Matt and Rudy will show you how to maximise the beneficial outcome of your strategy recommendations and highlight the value you create for them in the process. This webinar will run as a live session today and there'll be time for questions at the end. But before we begin, could we just cover off some quick ha webinar housekeeping? Today's webinar will provide you with one CPD hour. If you're in session for 80% of the time, and we will send your CPD certificate within the next week. You will have an opportunity to ask questions at the end of this presentation. And to do so, we ask you to please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. We have a good number of participants today and we are keen to start. So with that, I will now hand over to Matt and to Rudy. Thank you, Kaz. Thanks, Kaz. And uh, thanks to the AFA for having us along today. It's a pleasure to be here and it's a pleasure to talk to you. We're here to talk about taking your clients from the poorhouse to the penthouse. So what an exciting topic. Uh, and I think, you know, if you look at what's happened in the industry over the last uh, few years, going back to 2018, um, where we had nearly 28,000 advisors in the industry, it's come down to 16,000 now. So you've had a huge fall in, in the supply of financial advice in Australia, but as you'll see through this session, the actual demand for advice is at an all-time high. And so we really don't think that there's a better time to be a financial advisor. And if you look at the problems that the advisors have faced over the last few years with a lot of regulatory and compliance burden, um, you know, it's it's been tough to, to produce advice and, and um, plan a effectively for your clients. And I think with tech uh, like the technology that you're going to see today and the and the work that we've done over the last nine years, it is now that uh, Enri, my sister and I have been building out Padra uh, and, and, you know, seven or eight years before that at Midwinter, um, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible that this software and, and the technology is starting to really make inroads. So today I want to give you a little bit about Padra. Um, we're going to talk about the four key challenges facing financial advisors today, time, cost, quality, engagement. I think you guys would have heard this ad nauseum, uh, but we're going to look at a little bit around that. And then we're going to talk about how advice technology can provide the solution to these challenges and, and what we're working on at Pedro to really help financial advisors solve these problems, reducing the time it takes to produce advice, dramatically reducing the cost enhancing the quality of advice and really ensuring that you can engage clients so the advice is trusted. I think it's a really key critical item that's sometimes missed. I've got Rudy Hatter 
Started with me, Rudy is our head of technical advice. Welcome, Rudy. Hey guys, good to be here. Uh, look, I've got to give uh, Rudy a, a, a bit of a wrap. We've been pretty stoked that Rudy has joined the business earlier in 2022, and I've been chasing Rudy for a long time. He was actually a client of ours at Wealth Market, and we knew each other prior to that in our time on the various technical committees, um, be it the National Tax Liaison Group or whether it was the IFSA Technical Committee, which is now, of course, the FSC. And I remember being a young buck in my mid-20s thinking that I was the greatest head of technical known to mankind. And I was walking around like Yosemite Sam with my my six shooters out. And then I walked in, or then in walked Rudy, and I put my six shooters in my pocket and I, 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 I shut the hell up. But it's great to have Rudy in Padra. He's an incredible resource from a technical point of view. And you'll see what we've put together at Padra is this awesome database of over 600 technical strategies and, and actually enabling the, the tech to do a lot of the heavy lifting that financial advisors have done, both from a, a product point of view and a strategy point of view. It's incredibly important that we can really show clients the benefit of the advice, the cost of the advice, and then, of course, the value that advisors bring to the table. In terms of Pedro, it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic. We don't have Emery here today. She sends her apologies. Emery actually presented at the AFA conference this year. Um, Emery is my sister. I've got to make that very clear to my advisors who think that we're married. Uh, it makes for a very awkward uh, and uncomfortable uh, uh, um, uh, session sometimes. But um, Emery is my sister. We both come from a technical services background. So I was formerly head of technical at um, Advance, which is now part of AIM. Um, part of BT, of course. Uh, Anne Marie was the head of technical services at Centric, which is now part of Findex. And, and prior to that, she was at ASFA and, and Zurich before that. And I obviously moved from uh, being the head of technical at Advance to um, being one of the co founders of Midwinter. And I guess we, we basically um, came together in 2013 uh, and we wanted to combine that technical and power planning knowledge that Anne Marie had with the technical and software knowledge that I had and bring it together and really focus on delivering a platform that advisors um, and power planners and their support staff could use to really generate advice quickly and effectively. Our focus is advice, and you'll see that a bit later on as we get into the detail. Uh, we've now got offices around the country. Um, we also formed this Pager Academy, which a lot of advisors take advantage of. So we, we actually bring these great young um, undergraduates and graduates through who are doing their financial planning majors at the University of Wollongong. We also bring these gun IT school students through and, and we've created this Pedro Academy, which, which means that we've got this um, conveyor belt, if you will, of, of young talent through the business. But quite often those guys want to fly the coop and move from Wollongong and Kiama into the city. Some guys have actually moved to Melbourne and Brisbane and and whatnot, and and so we we tend to want to place those guys into financial advice practices that we work with. We've developed a sophisticated data engine. We won't talk much about that today, um, but it is delivering incredible insights in real time to our clients. So it allows them to benchmark where they sit versus other advisors in the industry. It also acts as an incredible reg tech tool, so that the key risk indicators. Uh, things like being outside asset allocation ranges or being outside allowable initial and ongoing fee arrangements or whatever, all of those sort of things can be flagged before it hits the client. So great from a licensee perspective. We successfully completed a, a 12 and a half mil cap raise. It gets bigger and bigger, this cap raise, <laughs> as uh, more investors come to the table. But our lead investor was Acorn, um, who are well known in superannuation fund circles. So our solution is quite um, unique in that we've developed software and a services division. So we talk about um, drinking our own champagne. It's really important because um, the software makes the services more scalable and more efficient. So we can deliver advice back to advisors more quickly and effectively. But at the same time, our technical and advice experts who, who work in the services side of the business inform the tech and the tech gets faster, more efficient, and higher quality. And so you've got this virtuous cycle going on. Um, the, the drinking the ocean, I mean, when I was younger, um, Rudy, you would remember, they used to talk about eating your own dog food. We, we've got a bit um, bourgeois now, and we say 
drinking our own champagne. So we're not trying to change advice, but we're just changing how you do it. Um, the traditional methods of producing advice on a blank canvas and starting from scratch every time um, are, are days gone by. And, and, and now advisors can really quickly and effectively produce very high quality and complex advice um, uh, in a really timely manner. And if you can do it very quickly and effectively, it means that you can bring the cost down because it means you can provide more advice to more clients at a higher quality. So what we've done is actually built, um, we, we've, we've basically broken the advice process down into the different stages. So you've got Pedro at home, which is where we pull data in from um, client CRMs or traditional financial planning software applications, the likes of Xplan and Practify and um, Advisor Logic, these sort of applications. And then what we do is, is we in Discover, we're trying to work out what's the existing situation of the client. Now, some people call this a digital fact find, but it doesn't have to be used like that. It can actually just be used as an exceptions report to say what existing information have we got from the existing CRM and what data is missing on the existing side. And then what we want to do is get into our product advice and our strategy advice. So we've built a tool called Compare, and that allows you to instantly compare your existing platform and underlying investment options against your APL. And we can do that from an insurance perspective as well. And then recommend is this great new um, tool we've developed, which really allows advisors to recommend everything and anything. But what's great about this tool is that it takes the data, the demographics of the client that we've captured in the existing state in Pedro Discover, and it actually tells the advisor what strategies the client is eligible for, which has never really been done before. And, and, you know, when I'm talking to my investors and I'm talking to lay people, I say, imagine going to your accountant and then being able to tell you what rebates, offsets, concessions, deductions are available. Now, none of your accountants, I, I can, I can um, hand on heart say, none of your accountants will be able to tell you every rebate, concession and, and offset or deduction that's available to them. The, to their clients. The reason being is that they're human and they don't know all of those things. So what we're doing is actually, you know, if you think about that in the financial planning space, financial advisors are expected to know about aged care and budgeting and cash flow and estate planning and insurance and investments and super and the list goes on, right? It's, there's an incredible number of advice types, let alone the strategies that sit under them. And we've built a database of nearly 600 advice strategies now. You know, 575 was the number that Kaz was saying earlier. It's getting up to nearly 600 now. And, and so being able to build that database with the, the parameters uh, uh, based on the legislation and the regulations and tying that back to client demographics means that we do all that heavy lifting for the advisor. So the advisor doesn't have to think, oh, and, you know, a lot of advice, advisors will call a technical hotline, um, similar to what Rudy and I used to be on, and they'd say, you know, I've got um, client one looks like this, this is their income, this is their assets, this is their super, um, these are their expenses, this is, you know, what they're thinking about doing, client two looks like this, what do you think I should do? And, and as a technical services manager, we, we used to come up with different strategies and basically we're, we're you know, spitting the, the um um, the wheel and trying to work out what are the strategies that I know and remember, but you're not going to remember 600 strategies off the bat, you know, so you, you, you tend to say the strategies that you know, and, and that's what we're seeing in the industry. If you look at our data, the number of strategies is actually narrowed quite significantly. So I don't want to go too much more into that at the moment. I'm probably stealing some of Rudy Sunder here, but right. I'll, um, I'll, I'll pass over to Rudy in a second. Um, this accessibility and affordability is something that everyone in the industry is talking about. And what's incredible is the number of planners is obviously below 16,000 now. You've got 16,500 now. I didn't know, you know which number to put in there because it's starting to get back up now above 16,000. But um, it's interesting that there's 2.6 million Australians getting advice, paying for advice. There's actually 41% or 10 and a quarter million that want advice. So you've got this incredible time in, in financial planning history in Australia where you've got the lowest number of advisors servicing or potentially servicing the greatest demand for advice. So supply and demand is, is at an incredible um, point in time. And so the opportunities for advisors in, in the industry is endless, but what we need to do is free, up, free them up, grease the wheels and enable them to produce 
high quality advice to that 41% that want it in a cost effective and, um, and, and meaningful way. So we, we really are focusing on accessibility and affordability and, and that's what Padra is all about. So we've built this solution, this um, family of data and rich tech enabled advice solutions. And it's all about helping advisors deliver value creating advice for you as the advisor and your clients. Obviously, if you're creating value for the client, you're going to be able to participate in that as well. A lot of people talk about where do we sit in the tech stack? And I always say, we just focus on advice. That's it. If you think about financial planning software, um, traditional financial planning software, they tend to be CRM based and they tend to want to do all of these things. So they tend to want to be a CRM, um, portfolio management system, practice management system, a remuneration or commission system, as they used to call it. Um, and advice tends to be the, the, the sort of poor cousin that is, is often forgotten and is a blank canvas. And so each time a power planner has to jump on um, uh, one of these tools that allows them to build out the strategy, build out the modeling, build out the product research, they're almost starting from scratch. And you've really got to be Picasso to paint a really good picture because it's a blank canvas. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to know the strategy. You've got to know how to implement it. You've got to know how to model it. And because it takes so long to do the modeling and do the research, it means that there's not a lot of multi-scenario stuff going on because it just takes too long. The cost of advice would go through the roof if suddenly the power planner was, was running multiple scenarios across complex advice. And so it tends to be very narrow in, in terms of the, the advice outcomes that we're seeing now. And in fact, if you look at the, the top 50% um, of advice recommendations, it can be covered by about 30 strategies, which is incredibly narrow. You know, if you think we've built this database of, of nearly 600 strategies, they're definitely not being utilised. And so we want to open those up to the market. So the four key challenges facing financial advisors, I want to brief on this. Um, and Rudy, maybe you want to cover some of this as well. Um, but then we're going to get into a bit of a demo and show you how we're going to alleviate these, these massive problems. So Rudy, do you want to talk to this firstly? This is the, the time taken to reduce advice. Yeah, look, guys, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, for having me along to this session. It's, it's a great pleasure. I've been working with uh, advisors such as yourselves for many years. I've handled thousands of phone calls and emails, and I absolutely get the challenges that you have in front of you uh, day in, day out. Uh, one of these is the time it takes to choose advice. It's very lengthy. Then you've got the challenges of producing the advice at an appropriate cost and also getting the tick of approval from your compliance manager. And, um, and as, as you can see on, on this particular slide here, uh, there are situations where the time it takes to produce advice can be upwards of 20 hours. Where there's extra time, there's extra cost. And, uh, and whilst there's no shortage of clients willing to, uh, to get advice, they have a particular price point in mind when they're seeking out that advice. And, and herein, herein lies the mismatch. Uh, and so um, what we've done here is we've, we've set out on a strategy to, to reduce the time taken to produce advice. In fact, a few months back, Matt spoke to me and said, Rudy, uh, how many advice strategies do you think uh, exist out there? <laughs> and, and I said, oh, I'm not sure, Matt, there might be 150 to 200. And so we embarked on the journey to start writing these down and we quickly got to 200 and then that became 400 and, and now we've hit close to 600 advice strategies. There is a method behind the madness. So by going into specific detail around the advice strategies and really getting into the minutia of the nuances around each strategy, I'll give you an example, uh, a re-contribution strategy. So that could be a withdrawal and a recontribution. Or you can break it up into a recontribution strategy where you're withdrawing out of your own super account and contributing to your spouses. And there are some additional um, variances to that. 
And so we have documented each specific strategy. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to capture the right information for that specific strategy and drop it into the, uh, to the SOA uh, without uh, requiring any tailoring on your part. And, and that's going to save us some time now. Yeah, and I think that, you know, one of those problems that advisors have faced and their power planners have faced more, more so is, is being able to model from a cash flow and capital point of view. And because we've built out each strategy and there's specific implications from a cash flow and capital point of view, it automatically drops into both the cash flow and capital modeling, which means that you're not spending time and your power planners are not spending time trying to model the the outcome of a particular strategy or recommendation that you have in mind. So that part's really important. And I think equally the product part's um, really important in terms of, you know, forever and a day, product research has been a blank canvas as well. Most advisors have an approved product list. Most advisors use SMAs, model portfolios, diversified funds, you know, um, you know, core satellite approach. They've got they've got a structure and investment strategy that they tend to apply across their business. And so, being able to build that into the settings and being able to really automate research has has been one of the the journeys that we've embarked on this year as well. So, you know, we did um, product first. We we should, I know we should do strategy first. Everyone knows you've got to do strategy before product, but we do product before strategy because product was a little bit easier. I won't say it was much easier, but it was a little bit easier. Um, and now the strategy piece is, is where we're going. And, you know, if you look at Pedro Recommend in its first instance, Pedro Recommend 1.0, we had over, you know, there's, there's probably 100 or so strategies built into that tool. Um, and now we're... In, and wherever advisors couldn't find a particular strategy, they used an other and, and then sort of gave us the detail around what that strategy was. What that meant was we didn't have the cash flow and capital modelling implications of that strategy built into the forecast. And so you then needed to manually edit and override and you know, do what a power planner does uh, in more traditional systems. So even though it was more productive than, than some of the traditional systems that advisors have used, in terms of the advice generation, it was still not 100%. And, and what we're doing now is getting to 100%. So when an advisor uses Padua, they go through the, the, the recommendation process, which we're going to show you a bit later, and they produce a, a, a document, a, a plan. It doesn't have to be a document, of course. We know with the quality advice reviews, SOAs and ROAs may be a thing of the past, but you need to produce a plan. When a, when a client comes to see you as an advisor, they want to know that you've given them a plan. So you need to highlight, this is your existing position. This is my recommendations. These are the benefits. And then I think what Pedro has done to take it a bit further, to really highlight the value that advisors provide, is we've taken the benefits, we've, we've, re we've reduced those benefits by the cost, and then you get value. So that equation is, is important. And you'll see that through the demo as we go through a bit later. What's interesting about this slide, Rudy, I think, is the, the, the sort of numbers that you see up to 2020 there are, is actually the Investment Trends Plan and Technology Survey. So forever in a day, we were being told that it was taking seven to eight hours to produce a financial plan, and it's incredibly consistent for the last decade. And, in fact, if you go back another decade, it's incredibly consistent again. And yet the FSC and KPMG analyze the same numbers. And this is what's wrong with surveys. Um, firstly, you've got to be concerned about a survey in that it's someone's opinion, it's not actual data. Um, market research, you can poll or market research the wrong people. Um, it may not be the people producing the advice. It might be the people that's in the business, but they're not actually the ones doing the advice. And, you know, I always found it fascinating that um, some some of these surveys were being done with advisors because advisors aren't usually the ones that are doing the modeling, doing the research, and spending the time. That's usually the power planner in, internally or the support staff. And so what we know, because we've, we've got a power planning business and a transition management business, what we know is um, advice. We produce thousands of advice documents each month and we know that it takes around about 
15 hours on average to produce a plan, which is an incredible time waster. Um, it's not scalable. You know, if I if someone had said, you know, it's going to take 15 hours to produce a plan forever and that's never going to change, I would never have built a power planning business, of course. But we know that we can make a difference in terms of reducing that time and reducing it dramatically. And we think that we can get it down to between half an hour and an hour to produce simple to complex, which is an incredible change. Imagine being able to produce a simple plan in half an hour and a complex plan in an hour. And if you look at the time now, it takes two to six hours to produce an ROA. It takes eight to 12 and a half hours to produce an SOA. And it takes 14.6 to 30 hours to build a complex plan. So if we can get that down to an hour, just think about what your business looks like. Think about how many clients you can service. And I'm not talking about um, boilerplate advice. I'm talking about high complex, personalized, high quality um, strategic advice. Um, and and that's the, the precipice that we're on right now, which is incredibly exciting from a power planning point of view. And this is what we're saying here. Imagine doing this under 120 hours. So you actually spend 16 business days instead of 130 or 3.2 business weeks instead of 26. It completely changes your business and what you can actually do. The cost of advice is, is, is another important element, right? So, um, you know, if you look at what consumers really think, this is from ASIC's 67 report, um, financial advice is too expensive. 35% of people think that. So, um, you know, and, and it's almost like I want to manage the finances myself because it's too hard, right? So I don't trust financial advisors. I don't see value in consulting financial advisor. As financial advisors and people who've worked in the industry for years and years, everyone knows the value that advisors bring to the table. We know from a technical point of view how much value an advisor brings to the table. And it's about delivering delta. It's about delivering something over and above alpha and beta. Alpha and beta on the investment side of the equation are uncertain. What is absolutely certain, just like the old saying, there's nothing as certain as death and taxes, there's nothing as certain as death taxes and a good superannuation concession or, or social security um, concession or a rebate or whatever. So that stuff is absolutely certain. The problem is you've got to know whether the client's eligible. Okay, so it's a binary equation and the first zero one is are they eligible, yes or no. The advisor's got to know that they're eligible and the client so once you, once you achieve that, once you go, yep, this client's eligible, great, how are you going to do that over 600 strategies? You need tech to do that heavy lifting. Then once you know that the client's eligible, guess what? It's up to the advisor to claim those particular benefits on behalf of the client. And we're all leaving benefits and, and, and beneficial outcomes on the table because no one is, is actually recommending every strategy that you can um, obviously, it doesn't make sense to do that if it's not aligned to the client's objectives or, or, or the beneficial outcome becomes negative because the cost of implementing is more than the actual benefit itself. Totally given. But we're not exploring every strategy or outcome that's available to the client. Now you can. And that's what's incredibly exciting. The cost of advice, according to KPMG FSC, 5,334. We're going to bring that down to hundreds, not thousands. Um, so I'm incredibly excited about what that's going to do in terms of accessibility and affordability. Trust levels will go up as well. The quality of advice is going to continue to rise. So we're going to get that strange dynamic where you've got time getting better, cost getting better, quality getting better at the same time. Normally in any industry, you've got to give one up of those three to get the other two. If you, if you want time, you've got to give up cost and quality. If you want cost, you've got to give up time and quality, et cetera. So being able to do all three of those at once is, is incredible, and, and that's what technology brings to the table. This is interesting. This is um, something that advisor sent to us earlier this year. I said, I rang him up personally and said, mate, what do you expect us to do with this? Literally, I can't read this information, and this is where we're moving away from this old way of, providing inputs to advice to a really digital outcome where you've got to obviously make sure that the digital outcome is easy for advisors, easy for the client, 
And the best way to do that actually is to get input and output in the one scenario. So what I mean by that is you ask a question, you get an immediate out- outcome, you get a reaction. And why that's important is that it encourages clients and encourages advisors to keep working through um, because advice is not easy. There's a lot of information that we need to capture on the client and then there's a lot of information required for the recommendation. The other thing that we're doing is building parameters around everything so that you guys know what's missing, what information is missing. Quality is about good inputs and then great outputs, right? And so what, what you're looking at here is our exceptions report that sits inside Pager we Discover. When we pull data in from the CRM, it actually highlights what's missing from the data that we've just pulled in. So you can see where the exceptions are and you can address those exceptions immediately. The last one's trust, right? And I think if you look at the way we've engaged clients, it's pretty obvious. So 45% of Australians trust advisors, 60% of global average. The term advisor should be a trusted term, but actually 45% is not good enough really. But it, it all comes down to the way we engage clients. If you look at the flow, this is kind of the flow that we see in most financial planning practices. So an advisor will do the fact find meeting. They tend to scribble on a, on a piece of paper. Some people now are doing a digital engagement and trying to get that information straight into a system immediately. But most people are still comfortable writing down on a fact find and then inputting that information later. And then what happens behind the scenes has nothing to do with the client, right? The client has left the financial planning office and now the advisor and the support team, the power planners and whatnot, they're doing strategy modeling, they're doing product research in comparison, then they generate the SOA, then they edit and personalize the SOA. And 20 to 100 days later, the client is invited back in for a presentation meeting. It's an incredible amount of time not to be involved, but it's not about the time. It's actually about being engaged through the process and actually seeing the trade-offs. So what tends to happen is the fact find information is given to the power planner. The power planner navigates a Starship Enterprise, a blank canvas. They paint this picture and then they give the advisor a 100-page document and they say, trust me to the advisor. And then the advisor goes, oh, I'm not sure about this. And they give it to the client and they say, trust me. Now, at no stage have we showed the client This is where you are. This is how much better off you are. This is everything else that we could have done. These are the trade-offs that we considered. These are all the strategies that we looked at. This is what we could have done otherwise. You you don't tend to do that with the client through the process. You kind of just get to the end and you go, okay, I've made my recommendation and here it is. And so the client doesn't feel like they're part of the process and that's that's what's going to change. So... Rudy, how can advice provide solutions to these challenges? Beautiful question. All right. So let's start off with the why is 578 or why 600. Um, the system will allow us to curate the right strategies for a specific client. So we'll look at things at a client demographic level. That means employment status, things like um, age, dependence, whether they're single or a member of a couple, if they have an entity such as an SMSF, uh, trust, the company, employment income, investment income, assets, liabilities, home ownership, all of that stuff's pushed into the system and then it will filter the possibility of strategies um, that might relate to that client. Um, An additional filter would be the scope of the advice that the advisor is uh, expected to deliver upon. So that then filters the list of strategies down further. And then we also overlay with the goals and objectives of the client to really get from the 600 odd strategies down to the relevant 40 or 50 strategies. Uh, The other point you made earlier, Matt, which was uh, really important was uh, as you'll see shortly, guys, the way we've designed this system, as you build out your strategy through a mapping process, and then you fill out some relevant details specific to that strategy, uh, the modeling will populate itself. So we don't adopt the blank canvas approach. Blank canvas means too much time, a lot of tailoring, and potential errors on the back end. Uh, 
Instead, we've gone with specific strategies, able to filter down to what's relevant for the client. We captured the right information for those strategies, nothing more, nothing less. And we put that into the modeling within the system and also the end document. Very minimal tailoring. Uh, I know you always talk about that the aim is 100% completed document. Um, we're going we're to absolutely strive for that. Um, I think we can. Uh, I think we can achieve that with many of the strategies. With some, there might be very minimal tailoring, but absolutely, our target is to reduce the time taken and the cost significantly. And uh, very confident that this uh, this system will do it. So we've talked about the five seventy five strategies. Um, this visual is sort of explaining that we're distilling down by those sort of different points. So with most technical strategies, as Rudy was talking about, you know, whether or not you qualify for those strategies depends on your employment status, your age, you know, whether you're a single or couple, what your income and asset levels are, whether you're a homeowner or not, whether you're illness separated, whether you're a resident uh, or not. And so being able to distill those strategies down to only the strategies that are that are relevant to your client is incredibly useful. Think about it from the perspective, and I know a lot of the advisors on the call are going to be veteran advisors with 10 years, 20 years, 30 years experience, but imagine you're a PY advisor in your first year and you enter the client's information in a fact find and the system tells you each technical strategy that the client qualifies for or is eligible for. That is an incredibly useful technical tool. Uh, in fact, Rudy and I would never have been employed into technical services with such a tool because it's a virtual tech manager. It tells the advisor what strategies they can recommend, which is incredibly useful because if there's some strategies in that list that this PY advisor or a junior advisor, an associate advisor hasn't seen before, they can sort of look that up. They go, oh, hang on, my client's eligible for this. I better look it up. So it creates this great training ground. And we're going to take it a little bit further. Rudy uh, is very, very concerned about this, of course. But eligibility is the first step. The next step is quantifying the beneficial outcome. And what we're going to do is actually quantify each strategy that the client's eligible for. You can, you can, you basically run optimization algorithm over each strategy individually. And then you plot the highest beneficial point of a particular strategy, and then you rank each of the strategies from highest to lowest. So not only will Pedro be able to tell you what strategies the client's eligible for, it'll actually tell you the beneficial outcome of those strategies ranked from highest to lowest. And so this is where we're heading now. So um, incredibly useful. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in and give you guys a bit of a squeeze. So we really focused obviously on reducing the time, the cost, increasing the quality and bringing trust into the equation so that your clients feel like um, you, your advice is, is, is going to be far more valued if it's trusted. So you can see the 578 strategies here. We can actually search for those strategies. Now, um, this list will actually truncate down based on what strategies are actually eligible for the client. But in this first um, step here, we call it strategy map. What you do is you actually map out what's what, what you want to do for the client. And so I'm going to just quickly do an example here and say, you know, let's say I want to retain Anne Super. I can literally just drag in what we want to do and we want to rebalance her investments. And let's say I want to do some contribution strategy as well. I'm going to do salary sacrifice for her. So you can see I'm building out the strategy as I go for, um, for Anne. And it might be that I'm doing something similar with John. I'm retaining, but this time I want to invest in a managed account or whatever the case might be. So you can see what I'm doing is mapping out the strategy. And you can see I've got one, two, three for Anne, four, five for John. I can sort of do joint strategies. I can do SMSF strategies. I can do whatever I like. So you can see also that we've sort of put it into advice um, types and then subcategories, making it as easy as possible for the advisor. You can also search for whatever strategy you want to find. And then in the strategy detail, what we're doing here is listing out the strategies and then we're actually getting into the detail of each. So with Anne's um, strategy here, this is the salary sacrifice. 
I'm going to actually look at what is the existing situation? What's the recommendation that I'm making? And then what's the benefit? And you can sort of move that around to actually show the client how much better off they are. And you can also see from a capital and cash flow point of view, how much better off they are or how much worse off they are in year one. As you know, every strategy is a trade-off between cash flow and capital. So year one, what does it look like? And what does it look like in retirement? And you can see that the cash flow now is negative seven and a half, but we actually pick up an extra 17 and a half in retirement, which is incredibly useful and powerful. So we're actually looking at each strategy and the beneficial outcome of each strategy. When I get into products, and I'm just jumping through here pretty quickly because I want to get to the questions, um, you can actually see the end output. And we spent a lot of time on this, Rudy. Do you want to just maybe go into that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, if, if you think of a situation where you're rolling over um, from one superannuation product to another, you might then do a top-up contribution before, before rolling out into a, an income stream. So that intermediate step where you've, you have a, a new superannuation product, it's just transitional in nature. It's not part of the a long-term strategy because you're about to roll it into it, an income stream. That product there won't feature in this list. We're not going to get you to, to uh, allocate how you want the contributions invested, et cetera, et cetera, because the system recognises that it's only momentary in nature and that it's a stepping stone to start your income stream. And so we'll get specific on uh, collecting information about the income stream. So if I use this as the first example, when I click on the product, it will actually allow me to go into page or compare, which is that instant product comparison tool. And you can see that I've already, or Rudy's actually already created a few different um, comparisons here. And so if I select the one that I want and save, It'll actually pull that data down into the system so I can see, okay, there's cash here. I can see how the SAA and TAA go against the um, risk profile. So I can see the variance to the risk profile. And I can also see the exceptions. You can see in this international fixed interest, there's an exception, which I need to explain. Why am I outside the allowable range? I can see my underlying investment options. I can get into the investment instructions, beneficiary nominations. And we've really made this super easy in terms of being able to select what you'd like and then being able to select, you know, um, I want to, it will always go to the estate, of course, but if I add a third beneficiary here, uh, let's say this is little Tommy and he's also a child, what you can do is then add in your final 25% and that will then reduce the allocation to the estate. So there's 25 to the estate and 25% each to any the three kids. So it's really capturing all the information you need from a financial planning perspective. Then you're getting to the advice costs. So you can see we've got the fees coming through here and really simply being able to make your selections on fees, on commissions. And then it gives you this disclosure section, which actually shows you with, it, with your specific licensee outcome or template or advice, um, output as, as, as I'm calling it now, financial plan, it shows you what's actually going to be shown in those disclosure sections. And then the value creating advice. This is really a two prong sort of step here. We're trying to make sure that you can quickly and easily satisfy all of your compliance requirements. One of the big ones that ASIC has, has, um, has sounded out is linking objectives to strategy. So these are the objectives for AMP. And what you can do is simply select what is actually relating to that particular strategy. So with this one, it's going to be apply for life insurance. With build super savings, it's going to be these other ones here. So that's quite good in terms of what you want to do. Pay less tax, commence the TTR, pension and salary sacrifice. So that's the compliance element. You can also add your alternative strategy. So you can choose which strategies you want and then add reasons for discounting. Along the way, we always have this microphone button so you can talk into the actual advice document and, 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 and financial plan and provide, you know, your, your detail and, and um, uh, particular uh, input. And the last one's value creating advice. I love this because what really is missing in the industry is how much benefit are you providing to the client with the strategies that you've, that you've recommended, what was the cost 
associated with Anne's advice, with John's advice, with the joint advice, and what was the combined outcome. And by showing benefit, both in terms of quantifiable and non-quantifiable, which is the more benefits, you get to this outcome where you're actually showing how much value that you're adding. And then what you can do is actually submit that to Pedro to do the additional forecasting and whatnot that you might need. You know, for something that's not recommended, it might be something in the future. You can submit that to Paraplan or you can produce that or generate that as an SOA. So that's it, guys. Uh, that gets to the end. We've got to 11.46. We've done very well. Rudy was holding up time signals for me there along the way because he knows I can ramble. Um, but we'd love to answer any questions that you've got now. Um, so I'm just going to refer to the Q&A. Uh, there's no open questions at the moment that I can see. Here we go. Tony Skinner is uh, let me know that I am rambling. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> good to see you or good to, good to not see you, but good to uh, hear your electronic voice. Well, Anyone I'm, else? I might just jump in. Go, okay, Kaz. And just to say, look, thank you so much, guys, for putting together this exciting content. Um, I hope that our members have found all of this information um, informative and useful. Um, we do have a few minutes for questions, and we invite any of our participants to type your question into the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. So, and I can see we've got a few questions coming through. Um, so one of the questions has come through is how how do I connect to send a power, how do I connect to send power planner a request? Yeah, so the best thing, Brian Perrin, um, would be to to get in contact with us. Um, so you can get in contact through the website pedrasolutions.com or the phone number is 1300 162 892. I'll send this through in the detail following the session. Uh, and the guys can give you um, a, a bit more information on, on how you get connected and how you can get access to this system. Um, so, yeah, that would be my advice on that front. But someone here has asked whether you have an example of what the actual final SOA or ROA would look like. It's an awesome question, Grant, um, and thanks for asking. We, we absolutely have example SOA and ROA documents that we can provide. I would call the Padua document the most visual and um, minimalistic um, SOA and ROA document that I've seen, uh, and we're really wanting to make sure that um, it's it's simple for you and your your clients to sort of um, to go through. Um, albeit it's covering everything that you need from a compliance point of view. I do want to show you a little sneak peek at something that we're actually putting together right now. So I'm just going to share my screen quickly again before we um, get into some of the other questions. Grant's question has um, has made me think of, of this, and this is the new digital dashboard that we're building out at the moment. So we're sort of working on the designs of this at the moment. But Basically, what you'll be able to do is click on, you know, this is your relationships and this is your objectives. And the information that we've pulled, all the information that I've shown you today that we've pulled from various sections can pull, be, be pulled into this. And so, you know, for the risk advisors, it'll pull through the needs analysis section. Um, it pulls through the cash flow and capital. So you can see the income, the expenses and the net position. You can see the assets, the liabilities and the net position. So you can really bring the advice to life, so to speak. And so um, um, keep an eye out for that. That's that's our next iteration um, following the recommend release. So, Matt, there are a few questions we need to get through quickly. Um, I'm going to screen them out um, in no particular order. This one's quite easy. Have you built an interface with x to eliminate double entry of data? Absolutely. So um, with x we've developed what I call the unlimited um, API. So Pedro and Xplan have been working very closely together to ensure that every data point within Xplan can be pulled across to Pedro and then pushed back. And that's what we've done. So um, Pedro and Xplan signed that agreement sort of earlier this year. We were previously using what's called the standard agreement, which is quite a limited 
um, list, which is why I call this one the unlimited, because there is no data field that we can't pull across, which is extraordinary. Um, there's other questions around what other tools um, are we using. So we're currently in discussions with Dan Fitzgerald and the guys at work sorted to make that connection happen. So that's um, in play at the moment. Um, I'm not sure what iFact Find is, so I can't help you with that one, um, but more than happy to connect with those guys. Um, Padua is open API, but we're also open, open to API, which is um, different to some other software providers. So um, we will connect to everyone and anyone because we believe in specialist software and the tech stack rather than generalist software that tries to do everything. Um, question from Grant around example uh, SOA, ROA. Yes, we, we, we can definitely provide um, all of the attendees the example SOA and ROA output, so I'll make sure that Kaz distributes that to everybody. Um, there's also a question around the indicative cost. Um, Pedro is 100% onshore, and it's a high-quality, high-touch um, outfit in saying that the costs are comparable, if not cheaper, to offshore cheap and nasty operations. Not only will you get um, a power planner, you'll actually get a team. So you'll get two quality assurance managers and a team of power planners around you. Um, and we do that because we want to give you guys the best possible output. So, um, and the cost of the plan starts at 350 for the initial strategy and 75 for additional, uh, and we've sort of run comparisons against almost every power planner in the universe, and, and um, like I said, it's comparable or cheaper against everyone. I can vouch for those comments, guys, having worked on the other side with, within a licensee and used Padua for the previous five years before I joined. Um, without doubt, best quality SOA, if you're getting more than just an SOA, it is pre-vetted, there's a multiple sort of uh, vetting process, there are three steps to that vetting process. You're getting high quality advice. And as, as Matt just said, it is uh, comparable and in some cases cheaper than what you get off door, believe it or not. Cade has got, um, I think I've answered Cade's question on cost, but he's got another question around um, uh, SOAs generated purely through the software. So we've actually actually jet, um, we've actually created advice generation software within the system itself. So you don't have to necessarily push it through to our power planning team. And that's what Rudy and I have been discussing today in terms of um, with the complex um, plans, we actually want to get that to a point where every single plan can be done through the system without actually needing to go to power planning at all. Um, that's going to be a, 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 a process, of course, but you can also already do most of your ROAs and a fair swag of your SOAs through the system automatically, and you don't need to push it through to power planning. It actually produces a perfect SOA and an ROA, and, it's, um, and it can be done on your own template, it, um, depending on which licensee you're working under or whatever. In saying that, we can customise our template to suit your requirements, so things like branding, formatting, colors, those sorts of things can all be you, you can you can adjust the Padua template to suit your requirements, cover pages, things like that. So it'll look like your template, but it'll be produced automatically. And, you know, um, we didn't show you compared today, but you can literally do all your ROA rebalance strategies in sort of less than two minutes. It's crazy. They're taking somewhere between an hour or two per document at the moment. So um, what... What we did was do the product piece first, and now we're really embarking on rolling out the strategy piece. Um, like I said, our existing uh, recommendation tool is up to about 100 strategies, but we're looking to um, not only get that to 600, but ensure that you can choose whether you push it to power planning or generate it yourself. We want to give advisors that option, and that's going to bring down the cost dramatically. You know, most of the cost around power planning is in the human element. If we can produce a perfect SOA that then the advisor can edit to suit them, to suit their own requirements, and literally it'll be changing that to Maddie or something like that, um, then that's great. But what it means is we can bring down the cost dramatically. Okay, how do you compare to advice intelligence? We don't compare to advice intelligence. We would say that uh, advice intelligence is, is a 
traditional financial planning software application that does multifaceted um, applications. So they do CRM, portfolio management, practice management, um, and, and various other things. They're not um, specialising in advice generation only like Pedro R. So we would connect to advice intelligence. And in fact, um, I ran this Jackie at the FBA conference recently and, and um, we, we, we're most likely going to go down that path in the not too distant future. Does Pedro have modeling solutions like Xtools Plus or would you use Xtools Plus if you're using Xplan? So it's actually got the modeling built into it. So um, we, we, we've been uh, banging around with the term that we're going to use, but it's um, basically modeling and projections. Uh, and it allows the recommendations that you made through the system to be to populate the cash flow capital model automatically. And then you can go in and make your forecast sort of stuff. You know, the client might be selling a property in the future or they know they're going to be downsizing it, you know, just before retirement or whatever. Uh, and you can actually then add those forecasting pieces that might not be related to the recommendation you made. Um, yes, the res with power planning, do you offer the research capability as well? So the research capability is built into Compare. Um, we do the research as part of the SOA generation, so that comes as part of that. Um, so hopefully I've answered that question there. Um, we don't do the actual selections for the advisor, if that's what you're asking. So we won't go and say, I've researched these four products. This is the best one. That's got to be up to the advisor to make that recommendation, not the power planner. Um, Joel Ronke. Hello, Joel. Hope, hope you're well. I may have missed this. Will a future iteration of Pedro and me and advisors will be able to present the advice to the client via a digital presentation? Yes, Joel. Um, maybe you missed that at the end there, but we've got um, an ability out digital dashboard capability. So it'll all be visual and engaging. And I guess um, if we move away from SOAs and ROAs has been mooted, um, that's going to be the natural progression, I would imagine. How does Pedro's Open API also include Explains modeling only modules? Um, so it pulls data in from client focus and IPS. We don't need to pull in um, the modeling, so to speak. But uh, if that's what you do and that's how you model things, we can actually turn that on uh, if there's enough demand for that. But we we don't really need that at this stage. Do you offer the research capability with the SOA production? So that's another, I think I've answered that question already. I use My Prosperity as a client portal. How does Pedro work with this? We, My Prosperity are another um, um, group that we've been in discussions with and we expect to have that connectivity within the next three to six months, um, if not sometime in 2023. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, we've been talking to the My Prosperity guys for some time. It's just about lining the ducks up to ensure uh, both teams can work on that integration together. Um, have we got any more questions? I think that might be it. I think that might bring the questions to an end and we're, we're right on time. So if I could just, Matt and Rudy, thank you so much for your time today. Um, such an informative um, webinar and I hope our members have gained a lot of value out of um, the content today. Um, software just looks so exciting and um, time saving. So thank you both for your time. Thank you everyone for your great questions. Um, the webinar recording will be up on the AFA website within a few days and your CPD certificates will be emailed to you within a week. So thank you everyone. Thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks AFA. Cheers.